Hello and welcome to episode 27 of the podcast. I'm Michael. I'm Noy. And we are the Knights of Entertainment, a podcast covering your favorite and unknown movies, games, comic books, anime, and more weekly. We appreciate you being here and hope you enjoy the show. This is what we are covering tonight. Uh, we are covering part two of Magic and uh, World Items of Overlord. But before we do, like, share, and subscribe to the channel. You can enjoy this show on YouTube, Spotify, Rumble, Odyssey, and more. We also have membership tiers on those platforms as you, if you'd like to help us out. Or you can check out buymeacoffee.com forward slash KOE podcast. But let's go ahead and get into this. All right. This is part two uh, from our series from last week. Tier Magic and World Items. Today we are covering the World Items section of Overlord. Um... Again, tier magic, uh, one through 10, and then you have super tier magic, um, and, and different classes within those tier magic systems. Uh, world items basically has tier systems as well. Hmm. So, uh, the items and armaments in Yggdrasil were classified according to their data size. So basically how much space they took up within the game. Jesus. The larger capacity for data, the rarer the item. Hmm. Um, Starting from the bottom, the classes were labeled as Low, Medium, High, Top, Legacy, Relic, Legendary, and Divine. Trading magic items was usually done in the form of data crystals. So you could trade items with people, and instead of trading what uh, the item looked like, you would trade its size of data. So that way you could modify it however you want. So it would still hold the same data, but different forms of the same data. Uh, however, the uh, one and only type of item that was able to easily override the effects or powers of any of the previously mentioned classes are the world items. Uh, while also, magic items uh, such as armor would not be destroyed unless they were targeted by specific spells. Also, metal was durable and highly resistant to uh, pure energy attacks like lightning, flame, or ice. Hence, armor made from metal, for starters, was hard to destroy since it had a high defense but a low HP. Hmm. So you, you couldn't really get rid of the armor. <laughs> you could damage it, but you couldn't really get rid of it. Jesus. <laughs> so starting off from the bottom uh, within the item series themselves uh, was the low class. So this included things like uh, minor healing potions, pitcher of endless water, uh, mirror of remote viewing, or like a Valentine's chocolate special event type thing within the game. Oh, okay. Uh, the next up from that was uh, middle class items. Uh, an example of that, there was um, a new world item in this uh, this new world that they're in called a uh, Gauntlet of the Griffin Lord. So just a middle class warrior style armor, nothing super special. You had uh, high class items uh, such as Pluton's Magic Short Sword, uh, top class items such as the Elemental Gotcha. It's basically like those uh, pay to win type things. <laughs> God, I, I can't stand pay to win. Or a torture device. Um, Going up from there, you had the leg legacy class items. So you had like um, the guardian heroes, uh, silver acorn necklaces, things that are a lot more valuable, basically up on the tier list. Uh, then you had a uh, relic class. So you had uh, a Christmas costume from the Christmas event. <laughs> you had haste boots. Uh, which I'm assuming basically are like the what? Uh, boots of blinding speed? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> you had the swimsuit that Shaltier has. So swimsuit? <laughs> and that's a relic class item. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> then you go up into uh, legendary class items. So you have... Um, if you remember the battle maid that had the, the guns and stuff like that, mm -hmm. uh, the scarf that she wore was a legendary class item. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, like uh, providing camouflage and stuff like that. Okay. And then you had uh, Shaltier Bloodfall and uh, her uh, Valkyrie armor, the red armor that she had. So, the world item too? Uh, le uh, legendary class. Oh. Uh, going up from there, uh, we have divine class items. Uh, Yggdrasil magic items uh, were created from embedding computer crystals, uh, data into the crystals. Uh, for instance, players may, uh, player made items in the game could have abilities uh, changed by using data crystals. So you could have a set of armor, and if you had enough data crystals, you could add it to it and change its effect completely on your own, or to customize it yourself, basically. 
Cool. Uh, however, with the performance of uh, computer data crystals dropped by monsters to be random, it was necessary to have several extremely rare loot computer data crystals just to be able to create a divine class item. Not only that, if you wanted these computer data crystals to be embedded into a container, such as a sword uh, type weapon, it had to be a weapon forged from an ultra rare metal to be able to do that. Jesus. So there's a lot of, uh, Reminds me of prerequisites. Uh, <laughs> you want to hear about prerequisites? <laughs> Play Bloodborne and try to do the chalice mission. <laughs> and believe me, trying to figure out the combination of chalices to uh, effectively find the specific boss. You, you know what? It's the whole thing. <laughs> I, as such, even for level 100 players, it was common to not have a single divine class item. Besides questing for them or making them, another method of obtaining divine class items was through the gotcha system. A lottery system lets players obtain these rare items with Within a limited time, so you can Look basically pay to win. Gotcha. So they just, <laughs> the so just be decked out on the fucking highest level. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, examples of divine uh, class items. Um, a lot of the weapons used by the guild members themselves. Mm -hmm. So like the swords and uh, the the little uh, daggers and stuff. The bow that they used. They were all divine class items, basically. Oh. Because they were more than happy to pay for... I bet they were. <laughs> so, like, you have the God Slain Emperor Blade uh, from Takami, uh, Takamikazuchi, the warrior that created Kakaitis. Um, You have uh, the Ring of Einzelgon, the ones that they used to teleport within the guild itself. That's a divine class item. Um, suck the blood and eat the flesh. It's <laughs> a great name. <laughs> uh, the Spewet Lance that is used by uh, Shaltier, that like uh, weird looking shaped lance that she uses. Mm -hmm. That's a divine class item as well. Um, and then going up from uh, divine class, you have a... It's almost like a tie, but you have uh, guild weapons and you have world champion items. Uh, guild weapons, uh, and uh, basically they possess the data capacity that is determined by the value of the materials used in their construction and the skill of the person that made them. Uh, this data capacity limited the number of data crystals which could be added to it. Thus, rarer metals are allowed for the creation of a correspondingly more powerful guild weapon. The downside with the guild weapon, though, is that if it was destroyed in the game, the guild was disbanded automatically. So if a opposing guild could destroy your guild item, it disbanded your guild completely and you couldn't reform it. Ever? Yeah. So locked out, huh? Yeah. I just, you know you know what they would do, right, if it was a game? Your <laughs> guild would get destroyed, right? Whatever your guild's name is, the tack on the number two. Yeah, pretty much. There you go. <laughs> I think the thing, though, is, is that they would uh, limit the players from ever rejoining the same guild again. Damn. Well, no, they're not joining. It's, it's two. It's not. It's not a. I mean, just coming together. Like Knights of Entertainment 2. <laughs> <laughs> you're not joining the same guild. It's number two now. And then uh, two examples of that is the Staff of Einzelgon, which is the very first uh, thing that you see in the first episode or at the very beginning of the manga itself. Can he, can he part the Red Seas like Moses? Probably, yeah. That wouldn't well, be surprising. Well, well, well <laughs> until he does, it ain't, it, that staff ain't nothing. Uh, the other example was the eight green, uh, the eight greed kings. They also had a guild weapon that is heard of from the new world, but they don't know what it is. So it was never mentioned what it was anyway. Uh -huh. But it was the only other guild weapon that we know of. Um, the one that would be tied with that, though, is a world champion item. Uh, the world champion was a special class granted only to the victor of the official martial tournament. Only a few had managed to obtain the world champion class, of which there are only nine in the entire game of Yggdrasil. Okay. Yggdrasil had nine realms within it, the game, so you could, be, you could have nine world champions, because each of the nine realms was basically its own world within mm -hmm. the game. Damn. Uh, as the prize, the champion was given one piece of special equipment by the administrator. Uh, the power of this prized equipment surpassed the divine class, rivaling even the guild weapons themselves. Of course, uh, since it was a reward for the winner of the tournament, only the world champion could equip it. So nobody else could use that, <laughs> that equipment but the world champion themselves. However, under certain situations, one may uh, put them on... By casting a spell such as Perfect Warrior, which Einzel Gone does whenever he fights Shaltier in the story. Hmm. He basically turns all of his points of a mage, 
into a warrior style class. So he's the instead of being the perfect mage, he's a perfect <laughs> warrior, basically. For a temporary <laughs> time, I guess. Yeah. Uh, the example of that would be a set of armor that uh, Touch Me had called Compliance of Law. Jeez. Or Compliance with Law. Right. <laughs> Because in the real world, he's a police officer, so he named his his armor compliance with law. Jesus. <laughs> now touch me. <laughs> so he, it, it, that's the only one that we know of, too, on the world class items or the world champion items. And then up from there, we do have <laughs> world items. Uh, basically, uh, world items have the power to change the world. Uh, there are, let's see here, uh, in Yggdrasil, uh, there are only, uh, 200 world items. Only 200. Jesus. Only 200. That's it. For the entire game of Yggdrasil. So that includes all nine realms, everything. Uh, each of them had their own unique ability and some were very powerful, uh, enough to destroy the game's balance. Of course, not all the world items had such groundbreaking abilities, uh, even so, if a player managed to get a hold of a world item, that player's reputation in Yggdrasil would jump to basically the highest level you could. Because if you could obtain one out of everybody, and there's only 200 style, man, you're doing level, really well. You're level five, though, and you just bump across one? You could, yes. I mean, like would, it is possible. It would beat the hell out of you. <laughs> uh, effects of the world item can be resisted in only two ways. One, you could resist it by owning another world item. Or two, getting special job classes that allow you to resist those effects. <laughs> just random job? Like job classes. Like oh, you okay. have racial classes and job classes. Uh, for instance, uh, Angel Gone, he's a skeleton, lich, and stuff like that. His job class uh, is a little separate from that. The janitor. <laughs> uh, while this is just a speculation, there was a guild that sa uh, said even a world item may possibly drop from level-breaking bosses. In particular, this being the Lords of the Seven Deadly Sins, since they were classified under Yggdrasil as a world enemy. The guild believed that through defeating all seven of them, the world item would appear from the monsters and finally dropping it. Normally, world items could not affect holders of other world items, and it would be a different matter unless those holders happened to accept the influence. All of which was made possible thanks to the patch created by the developers of the game. Because <laughs> apparently, there was people that were fucking with each other with these world items. Probably. Which is, kind of, you kind of expect to have. In gaming. You just expect it. Like, you know it's going to happen. I remember playing uh, Dark Souls 3. I just beat a boss. I just got a uh, a spark or I forgot what the, the, you get the specific uh, ember mm -hmm. if you light it your health goes from like it like doubles in size like you're almost halfway across the screen yeah and, you, and you're just you're just on top of the world <laughs> and this fucking sack of shit player has decided to raid my fucking world beat the brakes off of me and leave and once you die you lose that little fucking extra boost yeah unless you can pop another one that motherfucker! I'll never forget you. <laughs> and when we were doing the good old tactic of trying to uh, protect each other's buttholes, yeah. Because if you get behind them, you get you, get, you can do like a a, a death, uh, no, a, a backstab animation, and it does a tremendous amount of dam damage. Yeah. So we're both trying to avoid each other. <laughs> I was trying to protect my ass on the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> so was he. And you lost that one. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how the fuck. What the fuck? He got around me somehow. I was so mad because I got two on his back, and somehow he survived both hits. Really? And he just changed his tactics. <laughs> like I wore my asshole out. <laughs> uh, in the new world, uh, it is revealed that many world items have been scattered uh, about all over the continent. Apart from players, some world items are owned by its native inhabitants, respectively, while the rest have no uh, owner and basically haven't had any claim to them yet. So there are world items in this new world that they're in. Mm -hmm. uh, hence, all ownerless world items are known to be uh, known to be discovered in various places, such as runes, fallen civilizations, and so on. Uh, out of the world items, there's something called the Twenty. The 20 is the name of 20 world items that are unrivaled in terms of power. All of them could be used once. And not. Oh, I will damn. 
Uh, if one needs to be used again, one should find the item. One would basically have to go find the item all over again, oh, regardless respawn? of the difficulty process. Does that respawn? Eventually, yes. Okay. But you, if you, <laughs> you use it, you got to go get it again. It's like a devil fruit. And that doesn't matter what you had to do to get it. If you use one of these 20, you have to go find it again. Damn. Uh, the Guild of Ions of Bone. <laughs> yeah, let me let me try this new this new item out for as practice. Wait, I can't use it again. Exactly. Oh, fuck. And the the Guild of Ions of Bone, which our main character is the leader of, mm -hmm. he currently possesses two of them out of these items. Uh, the first is Ahura Mazda. It basically has the uh, potent effect on anything with a negative karma value, and its area of effect could span an entire world in Adris Hill. Hmm. So you can uh, you could affect an entire world of one of the nine that are in Adris Hill. You have uh, another one called Five Elements Overcoming. Five Elements Overcoming has the power to request the game developers to change part of the game's magic <laughs> system in Adris Hill. For instance, according to the uh, character Suzuki Saturo, which is the real name of Einzel Gon in the actual Earth world, mm -hmm. um, while wands could not contain uh, such a ninth tier spell like Perfect Unknowable, it was possible with said world item. Damn. If he wanted a wand that was magically enchanted with that kind of spell, he would need this world item or a different one, which we're going to cover, which will basically allow him to make a request from the developers to do it. So hey, give me a wand that has a 10th tier spell in it. Just <laughs> talk about wands. Also, in Skyrim, they have this wand you get, the mm -hmm. Waba Jack, I think it's called. And it has, yes. uh, it, 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 it does whatever it Random wants. Random shit. Yes. Yeah. Yep. It could do, it could help you, it could hinder you. Mm -hmm. I was fighting a very low level bandit. I used the Waba Jack. It became a high level Daedra demon <laughs> full of black armor at twice the fucking level. And <laughs> it, just, I, it was the dumbest thing I've ever done. <laughs> because before that, I think I, I burst the guy in flames. Yeah. So I was like, oh, this is awesome. And I used it again. And now it's a fucking Daedra. <laughs> or you could turn somebody into a chicken. I remember that too. Could you? Yeah. I never got. I never you get got, him and it would turn him into a chicken. I never got that one. He's got my ass beat. <laughs> uh, this one has a weird name to it. Uh, this is the third of them. It's called uh, Longinus. <laughs> <laughs> gives you a big old fat dick. <laughs> Uh, it has the power to completely remove any target from existence at the expense of the owner's existence as well. There was Man, no one. You have to read that was just some <laughs> shit that Alex Alex Pereira would do. To, it is real out of Sonya. I killed the both of them. Uh, there is no way to restore the data of anyone deleted by the world item, other than by using the resurrection powers of other world items. Neither cash items or resurrection spells would work. If someone were to use it on an NPC of Nazarek, it would. It would even uh, reduce the maximum creatable levels of NPCs, the special feature basically of the guild's home base. Good Jesus. And so if you wanted, if you hated somebody so bad. Take the both of us out. You're gone and so am I. Take the both of us out, then I have someone resurrect me. You would hope that you have a world item that could do it though. That's why I get that one first, then I get the other one. <laughs> uh, the next one was uh, Ouroboros. Uh, it has the power basically to alter, uh, alter Yggdrasil's game mechanism uh, in more ways than just the five elements overcoming could. This item once prevented the uh, the guild of Einzel Gon from entering a certain area for months, basically. Damn. <laughs> As a world item, Ouroboros possesses a power which is said to be superior uh, version of the super tier magic Wish Upon a Star. Because you can basically have the administrators do almost whatever you want them to. Um, then you have uh, another one called World Savior. It's a special club item, uh, which is very weak in its initiatory uh, stage, but it gets stronger with time. It can become so strong that could even it could even conquer Nazarek with all of the members of Einzel Gun combined. God dang! Over time, so just Jesus Christ coming down and giving hands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, then you have another one that's uh, it's an unnamed one, but uh, it may have the power to remove status uh, status effects such as mind control from any target, uh, and it's basically qu it's currently stored within the the guild of Wait, so we got this thing that can completely control people's mind. We just don't remember what it is. Yeah, 
that, that in, in and of itself, <laughs> wouldn't it be crazy if there's something in that game that exists, but they don't know it exists? Mm-hmm. They don't know that they don't, they don't know that they don't know it exists. Would that just drive you crazy? <laughs> Uh, and then there's another one that's owned, but it's never mentioned what it is. But it's in the treasury of Einzel Gone as well. What the they fuck? Got two of them. So a bunch of random shit they have. Well, they own other ones too. These are some more that they own. <laughs> uh, there's another one called Atlas. Uh, its ability is unknown, but it's uh, it belonged to the the guild when it was first known as Nine's Own Goal. <laughs> Before it was changed to Einzel Gone. Mm-hmm. That's the actual thing. Uh, but a guild stole it. At one point in the game. Even as I bet you it was Ocean's Eleven. <laughs> uh, then you have one that is in the possession of Mare, the the cross-dressing little boy. Oh, yeah. Uh, with, called, the, with them thigh highs. <laughs> is that the one? Yes. Okay. Uh, the name of it is called Avarice and Generosity. It's a, basically a pair of gauntlets. One looks like a devil's hand. The other one looks like an angel hand. <laughs> so it, 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 we haven't figured out what it is that they do yet, though. Uh, we have another one called Billion Blades. This is given to either Demiurge or Kikaitis, but it's never mentioned which. We have the Caloric Stone. Uh, this item was gained by using massive amounts of rare metal from the seven hidden mines. Uh, there was one that belonged to Einzel Gone, uh, Nubo. Uh, one of the guild members proposed basically to make invincible golems by using it. So it's got, obviously, quite a bit of power to it. Yeah. Uh, we have Depiction of Nature and Society, which is a big-ass scroll that uh, currently Aura, Bella Fiora, is holding. So the, the other twin. Uh, it basically has the power to create a um, an isolated space-time. And you can choose whatever you want that to be out of that scroll. So you could either have an ice world, you could have a oh. hell world, you could have a, a, a like a great forest. It's a little micro environment. Yeah. Huh. And, and the downside though with it is that if you find the exit, because there's an exit every single time, you gain possession of it. <laughs> so, and that, that's how. Put someone in lava. Yeah. I guess you I can win. basically change it to whatever you want. I guess I win again. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. But uh, apparently that's how Einzel Gone came in possession of it, is they found the exit to it whenever they were trapped in it. Oh. And then they got possession of it. So now they have it. So you can make it whatever you want. You could, you could have a, an entire world of just, like, poisonous gas. Oh. So you can choose whatever you want, but there's always that one exit still. So, like, if you're immune to, it, like, whatever it is that you're transported to. Just dead space. <laughs> Play like, uh, what's it, uh, God. It's the other anime that's, uh, out recently. Ah, can't remember the name of it. <laughs> where he, he has infinite space, though, where he can, uh, turn the entire war- environment around him to, like, just infinite space. Oh, that's odd. Yeah, Gojo is his name. I have no idea. Yeah. Uh, Yo, then, Joe. <laughs> we have another one called Downfall of Castle and Country. Uh, this was used on Sal- uh, Shaltier. Uh, the user can control mind control any and all beings, even with absolute mental resistances. It is currently in the possession of the Black Scripture, and like I said, it was used against Shaltier at one point to make her fight against Ainz. Jesus. Uh, we have another one called... Uh, <laughs> I'm going to butcher this name. Inungagap. <laughs> I see, yeah. <laughs> it's a world item that's uh, currently in the possession of Albedo, the uh, the succubus, right now. Uh, it can seemingly basically be used to destroy large areas. Uh, it was given to Albedo without the uh, permission from the rest of the guild, and Ainz uh, only noticed just before the game was about to end that she had possession of it. Huh. He hasn't taken it back from her, but uh, he realizes that she has it. It's almost like a staff with a floating black ball on the end of it, oh. but it can destroy shit. <laughs> so, uh, then we have another one called, uh, Hygia's chalice. Uh, its ability is unknown, but it was either given to either Demiurge or Kikaitis. So it, you can flip back and forth between the other two. It's given to one of them. Uh. We just don't know which one. Uh, we have the Nameless Book of Spells, a book uh, capable of inscribing many old spells and new spells onto your magic that held from both Yggdrasil and the New World. So you can put whatever spell you want into it. Uh, Seeds of the World Tree, uh, a racial change item used to transform into a different race completely after the game has already started. 
Uh, we have Throne of Kings, and this is a prize given to Ein's Elgon, the guild, for completing the Great Tomb of Nazarek in one go. And it basically gives him full control over the guild where... The, it, that's one of the theories, too, is that that's the reason everything was transferred with Ein's whenever they went to this new world, is because of that world item specifically. Huh. Uh, we have uh, two worlds, uh, Mandala. Two worlds, one cup. <laughs> uh, it, it's a world item that was once a national treasure to a country, but was later stolen by uh, the new Einzel Gon. Uh, we have uh, Greya, a world item that was under the possession of World Searcher. When this is a uh, in the the web novel only, though. Okay. Then we have a couple of unnamed world items. We have a world item that summons devils. Uh, we have uh, Mamonga's red orb that's uh, part of his body that he keeps in his uh, chest mm-hmm. that you see in all the pictures and stuff like that. Uh, it's uh, something that was only mentioned what it actually does in the web novel, but uh, basically gets stronger the longer he has it on him. Mm-hmm. So at this point, since it's 24-7, since he's had this on him, it's probably like beyond. Quite anything. high level. <laughs> yes. Uh, we have an uh, item somewhere on the eighth floor that was in the possession of Oriel Omega, but now the item belongs to Shaltier. We have an item that uh, the Deep Darkness Dragon has. Uh, we have a, a world item that c- can create an NPC. We have a world item that increases the levels of all NPCs. And we have an item that turns the user into a world enemy. Damn. <laughs> so like, so like cheat codes half the time. Kind of, that's, that's what they are. Oh. The world items are literally just cheat codes, huh. where you can basically do whatever. Though, remember in GTA, you that you could do the the world enemy thing. Mm-hmm. People would just fucking beat the brakes off of you, <laughs> and you would get jumped the entire time. <laughs> it's basically like unlocking god level, yeah, for everything. And whenever you can request things to be changed from the administrators themselves, like, yeah, just change the whole magic system here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna need you to give everyone else one HP. And you could. Thank you. <laughs> and then just you sort of fucking lay a waste. <laughs> it's almost like uh, that uh, thing you talked about. Uh, uh, was it you that talked about it? Where it's uh, where the guy asks the, uh, the genie for those wishes. Oh, yeah. He's like, uh, all right, genie, give me the most high tech uh, night vision goggles in existence. Done. All right. Now make all other night vision goggles uh flashlights everything else gone from the world uh, okay done now blot out the sun <laughs> it's basically like that where you can literally you have your own genie to ask for whatever the fuck you want damn and theoretically it's even shown that you could theoretically change the entire systems of magic so instead of tear magic you turn it to whatever you want <laughs> Ask him to change it completely, which leaves everybody fucked. Ch- change it to guns. <laughs> just fucking guns everywhere. And you could. Well, there are guns in Overlord. So. Okay. Laser guns and stuff. Damn, okay. <laughs> there's there's even a suit that looks like a Gundam. Damn. <laughs> it was called the Power Armor. And it was given out due to the fact that uh, when it was a way to get new players to start. Mm-hmm. Because you could store a really high tier magic in it, even if you didn't ever possess that magic yet at a low level. Mm-hmm. But it allowed new players and noobs to actually start playing. Yeah, where them, they wouldn't just get one shot by one of the higher end characters. Give them, uh, yeah, you got to give them an incentive. Pretty much, it was kind of like one of those little game passes where you get benefits for like two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, like, come on, try our game. We'll give you extra stuff. Pretty much, yeah. That's all it really was. <laughs> But just uh, the bullshit stuff that didn't help you at all. <laughs> it's like waste your goddamn time. And uh, it was also uh, theorized that in this new world, that is what the eight greed kings used to change from wild magic to tear magic. No. Oh. And if you're in possession of a world item, wild magic does not affect you at all. Hmm. So you can get thrown any kind of world. Uh, excuse me. You can get thrown any wild magic spell at you. But if you have a world item, you're not affected by it. So all. they all have the same little bonus. Yeah, they all have that extra little tidbit. That's and other world items don't affect you either. 
So if you have a world item, a world item can't hurt you. Oh, damn. That actually stifles a lot of <laughs> ideas I would have had. <laughs> Destroy all the other world items with my world item. Uh, that's the one thing you couldn't do. I used the, I used the Infinity Stones the Infinity Stone to destroy the Infinity Stones. It's it's almost like that where kind of uh, they have all that kind of power, but in the other realities, it doesn't affect them. Yeah. Basically, that's what it was in Avenger in uh, the Marvel Universe. Mm-hmm. The Infinity Stones from one world didn't f- work in the, another world. Exactly. Or another universe. Yeah. Wild. <laughs> but that is everything we got on part two. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it, and we will see you A much better time. structured episode than the episode 26 (laughs) i can already tell you that much (laughs) note to self write stuff down (laughs) just don't be too boring like some of this stuff is long and drawn out but like i said it's a lot of information and overlord has a lot of information on it i mostly when you consider that the anime leaves out a huge chunk of everything that you could know. Right. You basically have to watch each season a couple of times to pick up on every little thing within those episodes. I can still go back and probably find new stuff that I didn't see the first time. So mm-hmm. mostly once you read like the, um, there's a, uh, there's a wikia online or whatever for overlord yeah. that has every bit of information that you could ever want. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot of information people, <laughs> but it's a, it's very interesting and it's very fleshed out compared to a lot of other anime that are out there. You actually have backstories. You actually have mechanics on how stuff works. Yeah. World building is always really good for a series. Well, the guy that created overlord, he loved dungeons and dragons so much and he, he didn't really have anybody to play with, so he just created his own story. Sounds like me. Mine is creating my own story. Because <laughs> he just played Dungeons & Dragons with the, the uh, solo adventures. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but that is everything, and we will see you guys on the next one.